Math 43, welcome to the chapter three keynote. So let's review up some vocab for probability. The first thing we started with was a sample space, right? So the list of all possible outcomes of an experiment. So let me pretend that I am gonna roll a die. I'll let that be my experiment, a, a regular six-sided die. So I'll say my outcomes were one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then I'm going to define event space A. We'll call that, we'll say that's rolling and even. And we'll let B be the event that, um, let's go roll three or higher. Actually, and let me put this before I put it there, just because I know what's coming next. Let me do B would be rolling a three or higher. All right, so in this problem, if I wanted to talk about the outcomes in A, if I'm going to roll an even, those would be two, four, and six. And if I wanted to talk about the outcomes in event B, if I'm going three or higher, that would be three, four, five, or six. And this is just a counting problem that I'm doing, right? No tree diagram, no Venn, nothing like that. I'm just counting, die rolling. So if I started to talk about this vocab term, the complement, right? It says list all of the outcomes that are not in A. Well, if we look at A, we can see that two, four, and six are in A. So if I wanted to figure out A complement, I would list all the outcomes that were not. So one, three, and five, okay? Now, we can start messing with A and B. We can either take the and or the or. Now, when we take the and, right, we're looking for overlap. When we talk about or, we're gonna combine. So let's see what would happen if we were going and versus or. So I'll, I'll go ahead and I'll do the and First. So if I want to look at and, it's in all of the outcomes that are in both A and B. So if we compare A and B here, do they have anything in common? And when I look at these two, I can see that they have a 4 in common and a 6 in common. So that's what I'm going to put in here. I'm going to put 4 and 6. Okay, that's the and. That's the outcomes that are in both. Now, for the union, all right, we're saying what outcomes are at least are in at least one of the two events. And that means that you can be just in A, just in B, or in both. But really an easier way in my brain, at least, to think about this is I'm just going to combine, I'm going to take these two lists, and I'm going to combine them into one list, and I'm going to ignore repeats. So if I want to figure out what is in A or B, all right, so if I look at those two lists collectively, the smallest number I see in there is two, and then I see three, four, five, six. All right, and that's the outcomes that are in A or B. Okay, great. So moving along from here, in terms of probability rules, right, the probability of an outcome is always a number between zero and one. And I will repeat this forever because we, we will make that error time and time again. You're in good company. It happens to the best of us. But every probability is a number between zero and one. So if you ever try and tell me something like, hey, I got a probability, and it was 1.35, I'm going to sit there and I'm going to say, hey, false, right? It can't be larger than one. All right, so an outcome that always happens has a probability of one and a probability, excuse me, an outcome that never happens has a probability of zero. All right, the sum of all probabilities in your sample space have to total out to one. All right, so if your probabilities in your sample space aren't totaling out to one, then something went wrong. It's equivalent to when we had those frequency tables in chapter one, when that relative frequency column needed to total out to one. We needed to account for 100% of our outcomes. All right, the complement rule. We will use this frequently, the complement rule. Especially when we get into chapter 12, you're gonna hear me repeat this. So the probability of something happening is one minus the probability that it won't happen. So we had this formula that said the probability of A is one minus the probability of A complement, all right? And what that means is if something is 40% likely to happen, right, then it's 60% chance that it won't happen. That's the complement rule. So if we have this binary option, something either happens or it doesn't, those two events, their respective probabilities need to total out to 100%. And then here was our addition rule, right? This is a major rule coming out of chapter three. And we call it the addition rule because if you have this or here, you add the two probabilities, right? That's why it's called the addition rule. Now you subtract out any overlap, 
right? But we, we don't always have to worry about this. That, uh, well, that's not true. I mean, you always have to worry about it, but sometimes um, events are disjoint and this winds up being zero. That's not always the case, so I don't want you to assume that, but that's why it's called the addition rule and not the addition and subtraction rule is because there are times when this part doesn't apply, but again, that's only if events are disjoint. I, I wanna be clear that that is not always the case. All right, so we've got the addition rule. This is one of the two rules in here that you can always use, right? All can always use this formula. I don't care what the problem is, this rule holds. All right, in terms of other formulas, there's the conditional probability rule, and this is referred to pretty frequently as the multiplication rule. And you might think like, well, why is it called multiplication? Because I see division here. Well, I, I'm not denying that, but we can get into a fun combo about how multiplication and division are really the same thing. And why it's the multiplication rule is because if I were to multiply, and actually let me erase the multiplication rule part here and show you where it comes from. If I were to multiply this side by the probability of B and this side by the probability of B, right, these would cancel out. Oops. There we go, those would cancel out, and you would get that the probability of A and B is a product, and that's why it's actually called the prob uh, multiplication rule. If, it's just if you write it in a different format. I don't want you to get too caught up in that. All right, uh, you can call it the division rule for all I care, but if you hear people talking about the multiplication rule, it's the conditional probability rule. All right, and if we were to say this phrase here out loud, we would say A given B. All right, so the condition always comes in the second position. It goes to the right of the vertical bar, right? And then it also shows up in the numerator and denominator. So you see B showing up in both the numerator and the denominator. All right, and it's, again, it's another one that you can always use. All right, and let's get into some formulas that you can't always use. All right, when events are mutually exclusive, it means that they can't happen at the same time. Or you could say the two events have no outcomes in common, and another vocab term for that is disjoint. And that's when you see that their overlap, right, the probability of their overlap is zero, meaning this never happens, All right? You can't have both happening at the same time. All right, then we have the independent events, and that means the occurrence of one event doesn't affect the probability of the other event. And there were actually two formulas for this, right? We had a conditional rule and an and rule. And they both hold, like if, if two events are independent, then you can use either of these formulas. I tend to favor this one, all right, it's just a personal preference. But one thing I do want to point out as we start to go through this, I want you to see how often this and is showing up, right? It's showing up in the independence formula, the disjoint formula, the conditional formula, and if we head back, it was even in the addition rule formula, all right? And so that and... Right? So I'm going to put off to the side here. Anytime you see an and, you have to calculate it. There's no formula for it. And we've talked about how the and um, presents itself in a Venn diagram when we talk about the football. Right? It, it presents itself in a tree diagram when we multiply the appropriate branches. And it presents itself in a table when we look for the overlap of the column and the row, and that becomes our numerator, and our sample size is our denominator. All right, now when it comes to these two, the mutually exclusive and the independent, if I tell you events are mutually exclusive, you get to use this formula. All right, if I ask you whether or not events are mutually exclusive, I tend to put a question mark over the equal sign, right? and we'll see if equality holds. If it does, then the events are mutually exclusive. And if it doesn't, they're not. And the same holds true for these independent formulas. All right, so if I tell you events are independent, then you can use these on top of the addition and multiplication rule. Right? But maybe I'm going to ask you to prove or disprove events being independent, and then pick one of those formulas and see if equality holds. If it does, the events are independent. And if it doesn't, they're not. Okay, so there are your five formulas or the five main formulas that you're using in this chapter. In terms of strategies, right, draw a picture. Maybe there's a table given to you, yeah? And if, if the totals aren't given to you, they are in this case, but if they're not, go calculate them, all right? There's counting problems. Make sure you know what a deck of cards breaks down to and how to roll two die, all right? And there's a whole video up on Canvas for that. 
um, Venn diagrams, right? And this is, we haven't done this in here, but this is a, a three event Venn diagram. So if you look here, we've got people that break into your house, people who leave things behind, people who eat your food. If I'm here, right, that means I'm doing all three of those things and we're gonna call that Santa Claus, right? If I'm over in this, let me actually take it to a different color, this little wedge, all right, you can see that I break into your house, I eat your food, but I do not leave things behind, right? So that means I'm a stoned burglar, all right? And maybe that's funny, maybe it's not. This is the best I could do off of Google, all right? If I'm over here, right, you can see I'm breaking into your house, I'm leaving things behind, but I don't eat your food. And that is an awful burglar. And the reason you're awful is because you're leaving things behind, all right? So you can move through those. And then we have the tree diagrams, right? Which you see me talk about, hey, multiply along the pro appropriate branches. And these should always, and you can see it, total out to one, right? And if you have more than one branch highlighted, now we don't in here, but if I had another branch highlighted, I would add the two respective probabilities because all of those branches are disjoint events. All right, so summarizing all this, right? Oops, never mind. We're not ready to summarize. My bad. One slide off. All right, Venn diagrams and trees. So there was that, that Venn that we were talking about with the three events. Here, this is the next best joke that you can make off of Google Images. This is a Venn diagram of a, a phrase that you may or may not have heard of. I don't know if it's still hip, but you can see that these events here are disjoint. And when I say here, I'm on this one. All right, those events are disjoint. You can see there's no football. There's no overlap, right? Or we could call them mutually exclusive. And there's, there's a phrase that goes with that, right? So, oops, let me go ahead and erase. Let me back up what I had so you can't see this, or you can see this, excuse me. And if you've heard of that phrase, beggars can't be choosers, this is the jokey, hold on, let me write can't be choosers. This is the Venn diagram joke version of it. And I'm going to assume that you are all laughing hilariously as you listen to this. So well done. Um, but that's, that's again, that's the best we can do in terms of tree, di um, excuse me, Venn diagrams and jokes and stats. All right, tree diagrams, you just have as many events as you need, right? So, or excuse me, as many branches as, as events. So it looks like they were picking out shirts, shirt colors. So green, pink, red, yellow. Right? And then I could either wear black or white jeans, right? And that's what these branches are representing. And you can see the sample space, the combo in there. And oh, before we get to that, you can also see them using the multiplication rule to talk about the number of events possible. And this again, just Google images, me doing tree diagram, apparently going to an ice cream shop, fantastic. And you can get a certain flavor of ice cream and a certain topping. Okay. Here are your formulas. So again, I wanna remind you that you can always use one and two, right? Can always use. This is the addition rule. And this one's called the multiplication rule. All right, these two you can only use if events are independent. If, you, if I tell you events are independent, you get these two to use. But then I could ask you, hey, are events independent? And you want to see if equality holds. And then for formula five, if events are disjoint, go ahead and use this one. If I ask you, are they disjoint? See if equality holds. Make sure you know how to write up a proper Venn, tree, table, count. And sometimes there's just straight up formula questions. And when I talk about counting, we're going to talk about cards, right? A deck of cards. We're going to talk about rolling dice. When you get to your homework, you're gonna talk about um, playing roulette. So we'll do a lot of gambling, it'll be a good time. And then if you have trouble remembering what areas are what on a Venn diagram, I have a little picture for you, right? Here's the and, here's A and B complement, here's event A, so on and so forth. And I really wanna stress this one, event A. I get it all the time that students think event A is just the left moon. All right, but the left moon is A and B complement. All right, so if you want event A, it's this entire circle, right? So it's the left moon and the football, all right? And that is different than just the left moon because if I'm here, not only do I know I'm in A, I also know I'm not in B. So be real careful with that. Um, I've seen in the past just a lot of confusion on that. And just start to take a look at all of the different ands. Let me, let me highlight the different ands, right? We have an and here, 
an and here, an and here, and an and here. All right, and here's our or. Those are good place, things to know about as well. So just make sure you start to look at that Venn diagram and really digest what it's saying. All right, gang, thanks so much for hanging with me. I appreciate it, and I will see you soon. Bye.